The ninth tier martial sovereign Gu Fei Yang gets reincarnated as Li Yun Xiao, the trash of the Li family. Using his past life's memories, he begins his journey to restore his former glory. Li Yun Xiao's doubters stand in his way of accomplishing this goal, but the martial sovereign starts putting them in their place. To this end, he decides to uproot the Lan family and get rid of Lan Fei. Now, Yun Xiao prepares for his duel against the mighty Lan Suan. Li Yun Xiao stands beside a martial apprentice named Lu Yu, guiding him about his errors in his potion making process. He wants to meet Jia Rong, but Lu Yu doesn't have the qualifications to help him. Right then, the Tian Shuai Alchemist Guild receptionist, Lu Yao, arrives there. She reveals that Master Ling spoke highly of Yun Xiao after reading his prescription, shocking her brother Lu Yu, since the reincarnated soul isn't even an official alchemist. Who's gonna tell him? Getting depressed about his lack of talent, Lu Yu gets cheered up by his sister. Yun Xiao chimes in, informing the martial apprentice about the correct approach to make his potion. After Lu Yao's insistence that he try it out, Lu Yu gets busy with potion making. The receptionist then takes Yun Xiao to Ji Yarong's room, hearing loud screams from inside. Bro is sus. What follows leaves Lu Yao baffled. Not only does Yun Xiao rudely shouts at the first tier alchemist to open the door, but the otherwise prideful Ji Yarong also listens to his words and desperately leaps onto him. Inside the room, the man goes on about making a breakthrough with his soul power. Though, the boy can't care less and asks for his help in refining some pills. Hearing that Yun Xiao wants an origin impacting pill and an origin blasting pill, Ji Yarong expresses that it's impossible for a first tier alchemist like him, given that they are second tier. However, Yun Xiao tells him to just start refining and follow his instructions. Duke is told, Ji Yarong eventually manages to refine both pills at the same time. Crying tears of joy, he wants Yun Xiao to call him an idiot or a fool forever. If it means that he can become an outstanding alchemist, as if the boy were fulfilling his wish, he orders Ji Yarong to stop celebrating after refining low purity trash. Lu is ruthless. Since Ji Yarong is totally exhausted, Yun Xiao takes it upon himself to purify the pills using his soul power. The first tier alchemist looks on at the boy's refining hand seals in awe. Having been under the impression that purification is only possible for ingredients and not objects, Yun Xiao notes that he will break through the origin realm in three days using the origin impacting pill and saves the origin blasting pill just in case. At the same time, his ability to purify finished pills while making them look flawless leaves Ji Yarong with sparkling eyes. Wanting to follow Yun Xiao forever, Gabby Glazer. Walking out of the room, the boy spots Lu Yu surrounded by other martial apprentices. While her brother celebrates, Lu Yao notices Yun Xiao standing nearby and gives him a bright smile. Giving her a thumbs up, the boy goes back to cultivating in seclusion in order to defeat Lan Suan. Elsewhere, Jia Lan Academy's dean named Zhang Li Shan informs the crimson haired teacher, Lu Yun Shang, of the events that happened during her seclusion. He also reveals his plan to announce her promotion to vice dean during the feast. However, Yun Shang seems to not care about this at the moment and rushes to stop Yu Xiao from becoming dead meat at Lan Suan's hands. After all, he is the one who helped her become a first tier alchemist. Zhang Li Shan joins her, wanting to see the level of the students nowadays. Meanwhile, in the tenfold gravity chamber, He Zheng sits with Lan Duo, who is skipping out on the big fight of the day. To her, Yun Xiao is making a fool of himself, and Lan Suan is merely picking on the weak. In her eyes, no one is better than the other. Only Big Brother Lin and Bai Cheng Feng are true warriors for Lan Duo. While He Zheng heads out to witness Yun Xiao's demise firsthand, the girl thinks he is a wimp for enjoying the defeat of someone he can't be himself. Suddenly, Lan Duo gets shocked, as Yun Xiao walks past her with a monstrous presence. Du got that aura. At Ji Ya Lan Academy's arena, students gather around Lan Suan meditating in the battlefield. Yun Xiao isn't here yet, making everyone speculate that he has run away. As Egan Hun Bai and Chun Zhang begin doubting him, a voice shouts out, Look, that piece of trash is here. And so, under the shadow of Gu Fei Yang's towering statue, Li Yun Xiao arrives onto the battlefield with his black, hilted, iron heavy sword. Walking proudly through the crowd of naysayers, Yun Xiao reaches his friends, Chun Zun and Bai wonder where he is. While Princess Xin Ru Sue scolds him for showing up to get killed. Right then, Yun Shang arrives onto the scene and declares the match cancelled. However, 
This turns up the heat against Yu Xiao even more. Yu Shang announces that she is protecting him as he's her student, but the boy tells her that she is protecting Lan Suan instead, proclaiming that it will only take a few minutes to destroy Lan Suan. Yu Xiao walks past the teacher and marches onto the battlefield. Double Yu confidence, left with no choice but to let the boy fight. Yu Shang instead prepares to prevent him from getting crippled at all costs, facing off with Lan Suan. Yu Xiao activates his chakras. This baffles the onlookers, including Yan Shang and He Zeng, as he emits power equal to a warrior of the Origin Realm. However, Lan Suan is unfazed and unleashes the aura of a peak nine star warrior's aura. No one doubts his complete and utter victory, except one person. The believer is none other than Zhang Li Shan, who announces that everyone has underestimated Yun Xiao and declares the duel to be worth watching. Right as the boy starts walking, Li Shan feels something to be off. With every step Yun Xiao takes, the area around him trembles, almost as if his pace is a mystic art in and of itself. However, taking it as Yun Xiao being unable to even walk properly, Lan Suan unleashes his passing cloud sword technique, spinning star palm. A swirling vortex of energy launches towards Yun Xiao, who manages to break through its range with his speed. Unable to believe this, Lan Suan chases after his airborne opponent with slashes of Moonwalk Nether Swap. However, Yun Xiao avoids even that with an extraordinary movement technique, as if he was walking in midair. Stole Rob Lushi's whole flow. Seeing the pattern in his steps, Li Shan realizes that the boy wasn't even trying to dodge Lan Suan's attacks and only moved to complete a strange set of his previous paces. Right then, the force of heaven and earth starts condensing around Yun Xiao, leaving the spectators frozen in place. As Zhang Li Shan announces that Yun Xiao is borrowing the might of heaven and earth, countless Buddha like hands emerge in the sky. Life passes like a dream, a swan's step in the snow. With these words, Yun Xiao begins raining down the condensed energy onto Lan Suan. With a terrified look, Li Shan declares that it's the floating life seal that Yun Xiao can't unleash with his own strength. So, he has borrowed the force of heaven and earth for it, something that requires a level of understanding to the point that Yun Li Shan hasn't found a way to do it. Yun Shang and Li Shan wonder if Yun Xiao is Yang Di's disciple to be unleashing his skill, unaware of their true relationship. Meanwhile, the floating life seal rains down on Lan Suan, resulting in his complete and utter defeat. He came with the brutality. However, ignoring Li Shan's pleas to do so, Yun Xiao doesn't stop there. No one can save you. Sending chills down Lan Suan's spine with these words, he breaks his Dan Tian, thoroughly crippling the martial warrior for life. Yun Xiao then smashes Lan Suan's teeth in, fulfilling his promise of beating him to a pulp and making him lick his shoes. I always keep my word, proclaims Yun Xiao, standing tall as the victor. While Yun Xiao takes Lan Suan's jade pendant, Zhang Li Shan jumps up, telling the former that he's been too cruel. Though the boy kicks Lan Suan's disfigured body at the Dean, prompting him to slam it away. Landing furiously in front of Yun Xiao, Li Shan questions why he is still acting so cruelly, even though his opponent's already been crippled. However, Yun Xiao instead tells him to mind his own business. These words echo across the arena, leaving the onlookers in shock. After all, not even the King of Tian Shuoi or the head of the Alchemist Association would dare speak to Li Shan like that. Bro's family jewels are huge. Brat, do you know who I am? Screams out the Dean, only to get ripped apart by Yun Xiao for being just a martial king despite being over a hundred years old. Seeing this, He Zone, Princess Ruk Sue, and Yun Shang think that the boy has gone insane. Die! A loud voice ripples across the arena as Li Shan unleashes his energy to crush Yun Xiao. However, even while the ground around him crumbles, the reincarnated soul stands defiant, vowing to make the headmaster pay a hundred times over if he, Li Yun Xiao, doesn't die today. Witnessing the boy's stubbornness and fighting will, Zhang Li Shan questions what kind of an unyielding soul harbors his body. At the same time, a realization dawns on Yun Shan, and she turns around to look at the statue erected behind her. Yun Xiao's stubborn look, his expression and demeanor, the reason they all seem familiar to Yun Shang is because they are identical to that of Lord Gu Fei Yang. Busted. Over on the battlefield, Yun Xiao coughs out blood, promising to make Li Shan suffer even at the cost of his life. He consumes the origin blasting pill. While the Dean worries about his reputation, Yun Xiao begins emitting a radiant glow. With his eyes closed, 
The boy swirls his arms around in a tantalizing pattern, causing the winds and clouds to rise. Having been the strongest warrior in Tian Shui for decades, the Martial King wonders the identity of the one-star warrior making him sweat. As the winds rise and the world stirs, Li Shan questions if this is really Lord Gu Fei Yang's great wind and cloud palm. At the same time, Yu Xiao proclaims, the winds and clouds rise high, all because of me. Long ago on Snowfall Peak at Shun Xiao Temple, Martial Sovereign Gu Fei Yang, aka the Vanquisher, suppressed 10 nine star martial sovereigns using the great wind and cloud palm. Not only did he taunt the mistress of the temple three times, but he also roamed freely in the temple's forbidden places, showing scorn towards everything. This legendary feat was passed down in stories for thousands of years. Now, Li Shan screams at Yun Xiao to stop, being under the impression that he is someone connected to Yan Di. The dean worries that hurting him would be inexcusable. So, Li Shan turns around and begins heading off, letting Yun Xiao off for his first offense. He warns him that there won't be a next time. This leaves the students in shock, since Li Shan has never let anyone walk after insulting him. Meanwhile, Yu Shang appears in front of Yun Xiao and tells him to disperse his power. Old Codger, you're lucky you ran fast, remarks the boy, suddenly sitting down to absorb the energy from the origin blasting pill. Understanding that his meditation pose seems to contain some sort of powerful rule, Yu Shang sits down beside him to meditate, hoping to borrow this rule's power. As they wonder what's going on, all the spectators are told to leave the field at once. Bloods didn't get to see the post credit scene. Yun Xiao Golden Glow and Yun Shang's Crimson Energy, both mixed with each other, completely opening the bottleneck in the latter's cultivation to help her ascend. Even though she was only trying to grasp the former's technique. Moments later, Yun Shang opens her eyes only to see Yun Xiao right up in her face. The boy congratulates the Four Quadrants Realm Marshal King for advancing, while she wonders how he became a two-star martial warrior. As Yun Xiao acts like this isn't surprising, Yun Shang pinches his ear, scolding him. The teacher demands an explanation for what happened in the five days she was in seclusion. Yun Xiao promises to explain things after he has rested well, and Yun Shang gives him three days for it. Seeing her walk off, Yun Xiao wonders how the girl can be so bossy and unreasonable. Aren't they all? However, he finds her talent to be extraordinary, noting that she's worth training. Afterwards, Yun Xiao enters the tenfold gravity chamber to cultivate and get rid of the remaining energy of the origin blasting pill as soon as possible. There, all the other students avoid him. Seeing the boy there, Lan Duo wonders if Lan Xuan didn't cripple him. Right then, she overhears the students gossiping about the events of the day. Li Yun Xiao mutters Lan Duo with a distraught face, unable to comprehend the stories. Having reached the level of a peak two stars warrior previously, Yun Xiao now recovers the sole power of a first tier alchemist using the wonderful Great Expansion Divine Technique. Excited to craft weapons and all kinds of potions himself, he leaves the tenfold gravity chamber and heads back to his room, only to quickly turn back. Why are you leaving? Come back here. A voice quickly shouts out a longing to teach her Luo Yunshan. She scolds the boy for not coming to see her even after five days, but he pretends to have forgotten about their promise while cultivating. Seeing that Yun Xiao has reached the peak of a two stars warrior despite only advancing to the level five days ago, Yun Shang warns him of the consequences of consuming pills indiscriminately and demands an explanation. Becoming an addict to pills of all things gotta be tough. Just as Yun Xiao fears that he can't escape her this time, the teacher begins bombarding him with questions. Getting buried under the weight of her curiosity, the boy asks what the dean thinks. Hearing Yun Shang say that Zhang Li Shan has concluded him to be Yang Di's disciple, Yun Xiao's nose becomes as long as that of Pinocchio. He confirms this theory, pushing everything on the legendary alchemist. Of course, Yun Shang sees right through his lies. Despite this, she doesn't force Yun Xiao to answer her questions since her worries about him have proven to be unnecessary. Still, you have to come with me, remarks Yun Shang, grabbing his hand to drag him along. Walking through Tian Shui State Street, the teacher informs Yun Xiao that she has found a master for him in the Alchemist Association. Yun Shang reveals that this promising master wants to see the result of the boy's soul power test before accepting him as a disciple. However, Yun Xiao protests, knowing all too well that his soul power is too rubbish at the moment. Regardless, the teacher insists that it took great effort from her to make this possible and drags him along. Arriving at the Alchemist Association, Yun Shang takes Yun Xiao to none other than Ji Rong. 
while the reincarnated soul gets utterly disgusted at this sight. The first tier alchemist doesn't even turn around to see him, still ignorant of his identity. Ji Ya Rong tells Yun Shang to find an apprentice to test Yun Shi Yao's soul power first. Right then, Lu Yao comes running up to the boy and thanks her repeatedly for helping her brother. Upon being asked how she can make it up to him, Yun Shi Yao remarks, That's easy, just marry me, leaving the receptionist flustered. Wizard of Oz, suddenly, Yun Shang smacks the ever living crap out of him for harboring such an evil intention and flirting with a girl. Though, Yun Shi Yao still insists that Lu Yao was the one flirting with him. Yun Shang then furiously grabs the boy by the ear and starts dragging him outside, being told by Ji Rong's students to stop causing a commotion and leave. Wondering what's going on, the first tier alchemist turns around, only to have his soul leave his body upon laying eyes on Yun Shi Yao. One of Jia Ron's disciples announces that he will drive the troublemaking fools out now, getting smacked away by his master for this disrespect. As Jia Ron starts showering his young master Yuan with countless praises, Yun Shan casually smacks the boy and tells him to greet the first tier alchemist respectfully. Greetings, Master Jia. These words overwhelm the man, who insists that there's no need for a soul power test of Yun Shi Yao. However, Yu Shang smacks the reincarnated soul once more, causing Ji Ya Rong to lose HP and beg her not to hit him anymore. W Servant, doing a whole comedy routine while glazing Yu and Shi Yao endlessly. Ji Ya Rong leaves Yu Shang questioning what's going on. Everyone, make way. Some voices repeatedly shout out, announcing that Master Zhang Qing Fun has arrived. Being a third tier alchemist who is also the head imperial alchemist for Tian Shuai. The energy fluctuations emanating from him feel strong even to Yun Shi Yao. As Ching Fun goes out of sight, Yu Shang wonders if he is visiting the guild in person because Ru Su's illness is out of control. She reveals that the princess was born with five Yin terminal meridians and was only supposed to live for five years, but the king enlisted a five elements refiner to give a prescription to preserve her life for another ten years. That was nine years ago. Deep in thought, Yun Shi Yao mutters that the Five Dragons Pure Yang Pill, an 8th grade medicine, can cure her illness. However, Yun Shang and Ji Ya Rong note that only a legendary 8 tier supreme refiner could make such a medicine, being a godlike existence compared to them. Teacher Luo, you can go back first, remarks Yun Shi Yao, making the excuse of wanting to discuss his suitability as a student with Ji Ya Rong. The master quickly backs his statement, Liu and Yu Shang confused as to why a man who looks down on those weaker than him is acting like a slave in front of the boy. Afterwards, Yun Shi Yao gives Ji Ya Rong the task of informing Zhang Qing Fun that Ru Su's illness is curable. The former ninth tier refiner reveals that it can be done via stimulating her acupuncture points with golden needles, leaving Ji Ya Rong in awe of his legendary capabilities. Yun Shi Yao then hands the first tier alchemist a list of materials that he needs to treat the princess, ordering him to have Zhang Qing Fun prepare them. Though, most of them are unneeded refining materials that Yun Shi Yao wants to make a Xuan weapon. Later, the reincarnated soul walks through town and comes across a mid tier alchemist apprentice named Jun Liang harassing a girl at his store, who is none other than Meng Wu. Even as she tries to leave, the disgusting fatso continues to throw himself at her. He offers the bottle of resuscitation magic water as exchange for Meng Wu becoming his girlfriend, exploiting the fact that she desperately needs it to save her brother's life. The girl promises to fully pay him back in three months, but Jun Li Ang is hellbent on being a creep. Right then, Yun Shi Yao arrives on the scene and smacks his hand away from Meng Wu. What are you doing, brat? How dare you touch my woman, proclaims the reincarnated soul, making the girl's heart flutter. Unfathomable Riz. Memories of the autumn forests start flowing in Meng Wu's mind, making her remember that her savior is Yun Shi Yao. Meanwhile, Jun Li Ang starts boasting about his status as Ji Ya Rong's disciple and the sworn brother of Long Hao, the eldest son of city guard Captain Long Qing. He wants Yun Shi Yao to kneel down and apologize to him, demanding a few hundred golds as medical fees in exchange for the earlier smack, remarking that he knows Ji Ya Rong and Long Qing, but has never heard of his son Long Hao. Yu Xia reveals a bag of a few hundred golds and throws it on the ground. As Jun Liang goes to pick it up, the reincarnated soul gives him a terrifying glare, announcing that he will have to be alive to spend it. This gaze freezes the mid-tier apprentice in his tracks, making him realize that touching the money bag would spell death for him. Witnessing this sight, 
Meng Wu remembers the fights Yun Shiyao had with Lan Fei and Lan Suan. Despite not knowing what a true expert is like, she concludes that it shouldn't be far from Yun Xiao. Right then, Jun Liang spots Lan Hao and quickly rushes to hide behind him. As the minor team leader of the Tian Shui guards, the latter gives Yun Xiao an ultimatum. Either get on his knees, apologize, and compensate the former by leaving Meng Gu and the money with him, or become a cripple and live out the rest of his life in prison. Nah, Ro has a death wish. Confident in his backing, Jun Liang goes to pick up the money bag only to get kicked in the stomach by Yun Xiao. With his Dan Tian broken, the fatso cries out about becoming a complete cripple. I choose the second option, announces the reincarnated soul, provoking the minor guards to send him to prison. Long Hao then leaps at Yun Xiao with his broad sword. However, the boy blocks his attack with just two fingers, leaving the onlookers in utter shock. Finger technique, flower twist, as Yun Xiao mutters these words, the martial warrior realizes that his opponent is hiding powerful techniques. What the fingers do? He responds by shouting out, Jade Moon's sword. Unseal. With this, the martial warrior's Xuan weapon begins emitting waves of energy with every slice, prompting Yun Xiao to take a step back. Boasting about his Jade Moon sword being refined using deep sea frost metal by the second tier master alchemist, Lord Li An Wenyu. Wang Hao reveals that Yun Xiao is the third person to witness him unseal it. Trash is using trash, mutters the reincarnated soul, unimpressed by the first tier Suan weapon. Easily avoiding all of Long Hao's sluggish attacks, Yun Xiao strikes the Jade Moon sword with multiple blazes of energy, causing it to return to its seal appearance. The material warrior desperately tries to unseal the weapon, but he only ends up looking like a fool in the process, questioning if the moon sword is broken. Long Hao spills the beans about cleaning out his family treasury and begging Li Ang Wen Yu thousands of times to make it for him. Right then, Yun Xiao once again provokes the minor guards, telling them to bring out any tricks they are still hiding. This infuriates Long Hao, and he orders his gang to end the boy's life. Long Hao and four of his underlings charge towards Yun Xiao and Meng Wu, only to get dealt with like a bunch of maggots. As the girl looks on at the boy's fighting style it looks more like dancing, he reveals that it's a martial technique called the Flowery Confusion Fist, invented by the martial sovereign Yuan Shi Xiao. Using it, Yun Xiao makes quick work of the guards. He then takes Long Hao's Jade Moon Sword for himself, all the while breaking his bones one by one. Despite this, Long Hao continues to make threats. I would like to see you try, declares Yun Xiao in response. Ice in his veins. Right then, the state guardians, Hu Wei Guang and Hu Wei Ming, arrive there on their steeds. Long Hao quickly turns the two brothers against Yun Xiao, and the latter of the two rushes to arrest him. Unseal. With this, the reincarnated soul produces a bright light from the moon's word, blocking the state guardian's twin flaming energy blades. Wanting to take the mystic weapon from Yun Xiao, Hu Wei Ming declare that his mischief will end today. Meanwhile, the boy realizes that he has to take initiative as he is fighting a warrior of a realm above his own. Yu Xiao charges towards the enemy without hesitation, unleashing his nether swap, devilish windy feet. A flaming kick sends Hu Wei Ming flying back, who then unseals his copper longsword. The two warriors clash blades, but the state guardian loses the exchange, having gotten his weapon sealed. As Yu Xiao is about to take Hu Wei Ming down for good, Hu Wei Guang realizes his brother's situation and jumps in to help, attempting to piece the boys back. However, his attack gets blocked by shadow residuals. Fool, I was only luring you, announces Yun Xiao, unleashing Moon Slash to send both brothers to the grave together. Get baited kek. Yun Xiao unleashes Moon Slash, making Hu Wei Guang realize that he lured him there to finish them off both at once. Struck with his killing intent, the duo calls out, connected hearts, two into one, summoning the state guardian's great bow. This combination technique catches Yun Xiao by surprise, blowing through his moon slash with ease. I am going to lose, mutters the reincarnated soul. An unexpected attack sends him flying, causing a huge amount of blood to gush out. Yun Xiao's lifeless body falls at Meng Wu's feet, making her wonder how he managed to force the state guardians to team up. She also remembers that when the boy was sent flying, he turned around midair, telling her to run. Meng Gu escapes, wanting to get some help. Long Hao screams at the state guardians to chase after her, but they are stunned. The brothers can't believe that a martial warrior of the two forces realm forced them to use a combination technique. Taking Long Hao's Jade Moonsword for themselves, the state guardians head off, 
Yet Mond Lull. This enrages the former, who vows to make Yun Shi Yao regret coming into this world for making him lose his weapon. Meanwhile, Meng Wu runs around in tears, looking for someone to save Yun Shi Yao. Without even thinking about it, she ends up in front of a Li Mansion. Elsewhere, an esteemed entity is marveling at a second tier mystic weapon when he notices one of his servants running nearby, referring to the man as young Master Yi. The servant informs him of a girl outside the gate asking for help, as Yun Shi Yao has been caught by the Imperial Guards. It's no big deal if a piece of trash is caught, mutters Li Yi, the Li Mansion's butler. He orders the servant to tell the girl not to worry as the master is informed of this matter. As the servant passes the message onto Mun Wu, she questions when they are going to save him, only to get told that it's up to the higher-ups to decide. The master asks you not to worry, hearing these words. The girl notes that Li Chun Yang is the number one veteran of Tian Shui's military and one of the most powerful men today. Stating that Li Yun Xiao's grandfather himself has said not to worry, she should be relieved. However, despite this assurance, Meng Wu is overcome with an uneasy feeling. Girl got ultra instinct. Over with Yun Xiao, he lies bloodied in a prison. With all the meridians in his limbs severed, the boy isn't even able to move. Suddenly, he sees countless silhouettes looking down upon him. Surrounded by old and feeble men, Yun Xiao wakes up in the Long family's private prison. He talks about reporting this illegal act to the royal court as soon as he gets out, only to get laughed at by an old frail man with crooked teeth. The old guy begins telling Yun Xiao stories about the prisoners, revealing that all of them have been locked up there for life for the tiniest of disrespectful acts against the Long family. Don't worry, old man. I can escape. I will be sure to free you guys as well. Yun Xiao's words of optimism are met with a snark. The old man tells the kid to stop dreaming and just accept his fate. Of course, Yun Xiao simply ignores the negativity and activates his heavenly tyrant body training technique. Elegant lady style. Seeing this, all the prisoners start passing comments at him, unaware that the boy is slowly repairing his broken meridians as they speak. Ignore the haters, my king. In the inner chamber of the Alchemist Association's fourth floor, teacher Luo Yan Shang informs Ji Rong that Yun Xiao has gone missing without a trace. This leaves the first tier alchemist in a predicament, as Princess Qin Ru Su A needs to be treated as soon as possible. Zhang Qing Fun even volunteers to be Ji Rong's assistant for the process leaving him with no choice but to spill the truth. Afterwards, Ching Fun scolds Jia Rong for toying with the princess's life. Master Xu Hun, the guild master, is also infuriated, questioning how the first-tier alchemist could allow himself to be tricked by a notorious failure. Turning around, Ching Fun orders Jia Rong to be locked up and executed once this is over. Hearing this, the first-tier alchemist clings on the Ching Fun and begs him to believe in young Master Yun to save the princess. Get lost, shouts out the third tier alchemist, kicking away Ji Ya Rong and questioning what you should tell the king now. Suddenly, Yun Shang tells Ching Fun to wait. However, this infuriates him even more. He declares that she won't be able to escape blame either, since Yun Shi Yao was her student. Bro is fluent in Japanese. Unfazed, Yun Shang informs him that she only passed her exam because of the boy's advice. Despite not knowing if Yun Shi Yao really knows the golden needle acupuncture, the teacher vouches for him. Mentioning that he not only managed to unclog meridians, but also defeated Lan Suan with the floating life seal. Hearing this, Ching Fun questions if Yun Xiao is Yang Di's disciple, as that would explain him claiming to know the golden needle acupuncture technique. At the same time, Master Xu Hun remembers hearing from Liang Wenyu that Yun Xiao's meridians were broken and could never be reconnected, making his recent feats impossible. This seals the deal for Ching Fun and he orders to find Li Yun Xiao in the shortest time possible using any and all means. In a bar close to Ji Yao Lan Academy, a fully drunk Yu He Zheng tells Lu Lan Duo that the stories about Yun Xiao are true, claiming that he might even be able to defeat Lin Yu and Bai Chung Fun. Though, the girl has no interest in listening to such things, telling He Zheng not to bother her ever again. Lan Duo heads off to enter seclusion for a few days to remedy her bottleneck. Unable to handle rejection gracefully, the pathetic dude starts badmouthing the girl as soon as she leaves. Right then, Meng Wu, a part-time wine saleswoman there, recommends him a drink. Recognizing her from the academy, He Zheng boasts about becoming a martial warrior soon. Acting like a creep, he harasses Meng Wu. The girl slaps away his hand, telling him to have some self-respect. Infuriated that a mere wine girl is rejecting him, He Zheng forcefully grabs Meng Wu's face. 
Unfortunately, everyone chooses to ignore the scene and turns away. As a man, why are men? Right then, Hun Bai and Chun Jun enter the bar, tired from searching for Yun Shi Yao. They recognize Meng Wu as the girl who tried to frame their young master Yun, and He Zhong as Lan Duo's creepy stalker. Confident that Hun Bai and Chun Jun are weaker than him, the guy tells them to get lost. Revealing that they are associated with Yun Shi Yao, the duo reminds He Zhang that anything goes as they are outside the academy right now. The martial warrior understands that Yun Shi Yao's followers are all children of important court officials from the National Army, so they can literally do anything while they are out in the country. Making an excuse about needing to cultivate, He Zhang heads back. Nah, bro is ducking. Afterwards, Hun Bai and Chun Zun talk about Yun Shi Yao not being found even after three days. Overhearing this, Meng Wu asks why the Li family hasn't done anything. What? Shouts out the duo, questioning the girl what she knows. As Meng Wu informs them of the entire situation, Chun Jun quickly gets up to go and save their master. Hun Bai stops him, as they need to inform Lord Zong and Teacher Luo first. He also tells Meng Wu to follow them for now, considering she can't avoid getting involved in this anymore. At the Long family's courtyard, Long Ron, the second young master of the Long family, trains his concealed tiger fist. After praising him for being better than his good-for-nothing brother, Ron's father sighs out. Being the leader of the city guards, Long Qing is stressed out since they can't find a young man anywhere in the entire country. He then wonders where Long Hao has run off to this time. With a childlike admiration for his brother, Long Ron reveals that Long Hao has gone to the prison to make a brat regret coming into this world for injuring his arms. Long Qing sighs out yet again, expressing disappointment in him for loofing around at a time like this. Right then, Long Ron mentions that his brother locked that young guy up three days ago, wondering if he is the person the guards are looking for. Long Qing gets frightened, but soon feels relieved upon hearing that the guy's surname is Yun. Of course, this sense of security was a false alarm, as Long Ron finally remembers the name right. Li Yun Xiao. These words make Long Qing's soul leave his body. Having dispatched all the city guards to search strenuously for three whole days, Long Qing can't believe that Li Yun Xiao was locked up in his prison all along. Thinking about what would happen if the eldest grandson of Duke Jing Guo and the son of General Fei Long would be found there, he feels like an ant. Long Ron only scares him more by mentioning the possibility that Long Hao could have already killed Yun Xiao. Emotional damage. Right then, the Long family's disciples come running there, revealing that someone has forced their way into the mansion. Long Qing roars out, only to find out that the intruders are none other than the guardians of the state. Following them, Zhang Qing Fun, Master Xu Hun, Luo Yunshang, Jia Rong, Meng Wu, Chun Zun, and Hun Bai all enter the mansion. Upon being accused of taking Yun Xiao captive, Long Qing fiends ignorance. Yunshang then tells Meng Wu to explain what happened on that day, and the girl does so without leaving out a single detail. While Long Qing gets pressed by the others, Ji Ya Rong laments that all this happened because of his student, Jun Liang. He then inquires if Yun Shi Yao is alive or dead. Not knowing himself, Long Qing puts all the blame on his disobedient son and guides them to the prison. Over with Yun Shi Yao, he has repaired the broken meridians in his body using the elegant lady style. Though, his Yu An Qi needs more time to recover fully. So, he thinks it to be a pity that Long Hao and his accomplices have arrived earlier than he had expected. Reiterating that he will make Yun Shi Yao regret ever being born, Long Hao commands his underlings to chain him up. Seeing the crowd standing before him, Yun Shi Yao notes that there's a total of 35 people, out of which 12 are martial warriors and one is a martial master. Realizing that it will be hard to fight his way out, he pretends to act dead. Long Hao then orders his underlings to wake Yun Shi Yao up with special salt water that corrodes flesh and blood upon contact with wounds. Much to their dismay, the boy has no wounds on his body. Yun Shi Yao provokes Long Hao for being unimportant, getting punched in the stomach. Of course, the former turns even this into an act of disrespect by coughing out blood right on the latter's face. Yun Shi Yao then sarcastically asks Long Hao where his sword is, infuriating him. Go. Jun Liang reels Long Hao back, remarking that Yun Shi Yao is only provoking him to earn a swift and painless death. Hearing this, Long Hao turns around, ordering his underlings to give Yun Shi Yao a hundred lashes without killing him. At the same time, the reincarnated soul realizes that his body absorbed the impact from Long Hao's earlier punch and converted it into Yuan Qi for his Dan Tian. And the plot armor gets thicker. 
Could it be? Mutters Yun Shi Yao, wondering if this is also a usage of the heavenly tyrant body training technique. In his previous life, Yun Shi Yao fought with the tyrant martial emperor in a ranking battle of the Cloud Wind leaderboards. Their battle lasted many days, causing immense destruction. In the end, the tyrant martial emperor eventually overcame Yun Shi Yao's true qi with brute force and physical strength. The longer their fight went on, the more the former gained the upper hand, until the latter suffered defeat. Now, Yun Shi Yao finally understands what happened, realizing that the tyrant body training technique is as strong as the godly evolution technique. Of course, the body still had to suffer an opponent's attack for the energy to be absorbed. At the Nine Heavens Realm of Emperors, no one would dare stand in place to get hit by a fellow emperor's attack, unless they had no choice. Having gotten scared for a moment at the thought of this technique being invincible, Yun Shi Yao soon realizes its limitations. However, Getting whipped should be very effective in utilizing this technique. Blue living a masochist's dream. Facing the pain head-on, Yu Shi Yao provokes the guy whipping him to restore more of his energy. Seeing this, the martial master notes that the boy is a stubborn soul to have not made a single sound despite taking so many hits. However, Jun Li Ong and Long Hao think that it's fun exactly because of that. Meanwhile, Yun Shi Yao notes that he just needs 10 more hits to break through to become a 3-star martial warrior. Unfortunately, Longhao stops the whipping at that exact moment and announces that they will be moving on the main course now. Despite being able to break free at any time, Yun Shi Yao decides to play along for now because of the second tier martial master there. Right then, Jun Li Ong demonstrates the powder he calls insanity to the clear mind. He used two of his underlings a whiff, turning them fruity. Boasting about his masterpiece, Jun Li Ong turns over to Yun Shi Yao. This surprise mental assault allows the reincarnated soul to break through to three stars, and he frees himself from the metal chains. He throws the powder right back at Jun Li Ang, turning him and the rest of his underlings to the dark side. Being the only one still in control of himself, Long Hao shouts at his uncle Ma to end Yun Shi Yao. The martial master reveals himself, only to get charged it by Yun Shi Yao. Infuriated that a mere martial warrior dares to appear before him, Ma unleashes all his strength and becomes buff. Master Roshi, is that you? Suddenly, the entire world starts to rumble as Yun Shi Yao unleashes his Universal Soul Suppressor, Demon Moon. Struck by Yun Shi Yao's Universal Soul Suppressor, Demon Moon, the Martial Master becomes frozen in place. The boy takes advantage of the opening, striking him down with a thunderous punch. Though, Ma soon gets up. As he wonders how a brat knows soul techniques, all the fruity guys in the room jump on him, including Long Hao. Laughing at the martial master getting buried under big, burly men, Yun Shi Yao leaves the prison. While locking up the stairs, the reincarnated soul uses a tire adjustment to restore his ripped clothing. He also ties up his hair, fully returning to his glorified look, wanting to return to the Alchemist Association quickly since Chin Ru Su. Its condition can't be delayed any longer. Yun Shi Yao arrives above ground. Though, a crowd of people is waiting for him beyond the door, questioning if he's okay. The group then hears weird noises coming from inside the prison. Wondering what's going on, they head inside, ignoring Yun Shi Yao's advice not to bother them. Of course, the extreme scene they see in the prison has to be redacted, not them gatekeeping big burly men. Rushing back outside, everyone throws up. Long Qing asks Yun Shi Yao the meaning of all this, only to get told that his son invited him to his weird party without any warning. This Li Yu Shi Yao mutters Long Qing, getting uneasy from the three-star martial warrior. Sensing that not even he could be an opponent for Yun Shi Yao, Long Qing chalks it up to his earlier disgust throwing off his intuition. As the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Guards tries questioning Yun Shi Yao, Ji Ya Rong accuses him of being free like his son. A notion that he strongly protests, enough, shouts out Zhang Qing Fun. Approaching the boy. Much to his surprise, Yu Shi Yao correctly deduces his identity, remarking that he's different from what the rumors say. The third tier alchemist asks the boy if he knows how to perform golden needle acupuncture. I can try it, replies Yun Shi Yao, angering Ching Fun. The consequent conversation makes the third tier alchemist put forward a proposal. If Yu Shi Yao manages to save the princess, then Ching Fun will guarantee that his life is protected no matter what else happens in the future of Tian Shui. However, if the reincarnated soul fails, not even his grandfather Li Chun Yan will be able to save him. My life will always be my own to control, declares Yun Shi Yao, enraging Ching Fun. Let them know, King. 
while Ji Ya Rong tries to mediate the situation. The boy notices Meng Wu there, remarking that they are even now. He then tells Master Zhang to assign Meng Wu and teacher Lu Yunshang as his assistants, making Ji Ya Rong wonder whatever happened to him being his assistant. Isn't Jun Li on your disciple? These words make Ji Ya Rong realize that he's done for, as none of his pleas get through to his young master Yun. Afterwards, the group arrives at the Creo Chamber on the Alchemist Association's fourth floor, where Princess Chin Ru Su and lies unconscious like the Sleeping Beauty. Sean Ching Fun explains that the Violet Jade Bed slightly slows down the princess's illness, but has already reached its limit. Remarking that the grade of his current spirit power is low, Yun Xiao wishes that he had discovered the princess's condition earlier. At the same time, Yun Shang questions if a roll of silk and 30 golden needles is really all he needs. Worried about the situation, Ching Fun asks Yun Xiao his rate of success, wanting to notify the king if the chances are too low. The boy reveals that he would have a 100% success rate with a procedure on a man, but since the princess is a lady, he will have to throw the needles from 15 meters away through curtains. Nah, bro is trolling. Adding in his recent electrocution at Longhouse hands, the success rate would fall to 90%. Hearing that Yun Xiao prepared curtains to avoid behaving inappropriately with a girl, Ching Fun loses it. Master Xu Han also snarks at the reincarnated soul's claims, given that the spirit power of a fifth-tier alchemist is needed to successfully perform golden needle acupuncture. Yun Shang smacks her student for being unserious and thinking that he is Lord Yang Di as well. However, Yun Xiao insists that he is being serious, rushing the teacher and Meng Wu to help him with the flying acupuncture. Suddenly, Ching Fun snatches away the curtains. He tells Yun Xiao to spot fooling around with the princess's priceless life and just do it face to face. Though the boy snatches them right back, claiming that he needs the curtains precisely because she's priceless. As the target of golden needle acupuncture needs to be completely undressed during the procedure, Yun Xiao would see all of Ru Xu as assets. I would fold like an omelet. If the king orders it, he will be forced to marry her. So, the reincarnated soul refuses to get entrapped by them. Zhang Qing Fun tilts his head, unable to believe that Yun Xiao has turned something this serious into a joke. He wonders if the kid is toying with him. Right then, Yun Xiao reminds them that time is of the essence and sends all the men outside the room. He then orders Meng Wu to take Ru Xu, weighs clothes off and asks Teacher Luo to put the curtains up. Yun Shang once again shouts at the boy to be serious, prompting him to give her a demonstration of his precision with the floating needles. Fully showcasing his prowess, Yun Xiao finally begins the procedure. Countless golden needles start flying through the small opening in the curtains, piercing Ru Xu Wei's body. At the same time, outside the room, Su Han asks Ching Fun if he thinks Li Yun Xiao to be full of crap. Of course, the third tier alchemist is convinced that they will have to make do with it even if he is. Ching Fun then glares at Ji Ya Rong, who instantly looks away, continuously praying for the procedure to work. Moments later, the room to the Creo chamber opens, and Yun Xiao walks out. Seeing this, Ching Fun shouts at him for not starting yet, asserting that the princess can't last much longer. I am already done, announces the reincarnated soul, shocking everyone. Hearing Yun Xiao say that he's finished after just a few minutes, the men wonder if he is joking. While Ji Rong worries that he is doomed, Zhang Ching Fun charges towards the boy to chop his head off for messing with the princess's life. Suddenly, Yu Shang appears before him. Announcing that Yun Xiao is telling the truth, she reveals that the princess is fully healed. Ching Fun doesn't believe her words, but Su Han quickly checks up on Ru Su Wei and confirms the claim. Wondering how a mere teenager cured a decade-long headache of a disease, Ji Ya Rong falls to the ground, hoping that his life is safe for now. At the same time, Zhang Ching Fun starts sweating and lets out a nervous chuckle. It was at this moment that he knew, he effed up. Why are you giggling? Shouts out Yun Xiao, remarking that it only took him 18 needles to cure the princess, and it would take even less than that to slice up the man. Questioning how long the royal alchemist thought it would take him, Yu Xiao asks Ching Fun if everyone in the royal court is stupid. Seeing the boy scold the king's alchemist, the onlookers wonder if he has gone time. On the other hand, Ching Fun feels oddly nostalgic. Instead of being angry, he feels dejected. As Yu Xiao doubles down on his statement, Yu Shang smacks him. She instructs the boy to stop blabbering and apologize to Master Zhang. Apologize, mutters Yun Xiao, declaring that he will only consider it once Ching Fun masters flying needle acupuncture. 
The boy then heads off, leaving Yun Shang to apologize on his behalf. However, Ching Fun shakes his head, murmuring that the informer superior, he labels Yun Xiao to be correct. With his head lowered, the third-tier alchemist gives everyone permission to leave while he stays there for a few days to monitor the princess's condition. Hearing this, Teacher Luo grabs Hun Bai and Chun Zun, telling them to come with her. Ma Mami? In a street in Tian Shuai, Yun Shang questions Yun Xiao's friends if they have any clue about his recent changes. After a moment of silence, they remark that the boy used to be a burden, but out of nowhere, became someone for them to look up to. Pondering over it, Yun Shang questions if Yun Xiao has stayed silent for so long due because of the Li family's current situation. Just as everyone had concluded that he was trash who wasn't worth considering, Yun Xiao suddenly dared to stand on the stage, shining like a star. Hun Bai reveals that Yun Xiao's grandfather, the Duke, is currently in isolated training, having handed control of everything in the family to Li Yi. As Yun Xiao's father, General Fei Long, is far away defending the frontier region, he couldn't do anything about it either. As it currently stands, the entire Li family is rumored to be under Li Yi's control. Chiming in, Chun Zun adds that there's a rumor about that the Duke isn't in isolation, but instead has been imprisoned by Li Yi, someone who was granted the Li family's surname. Yun Shang notes that a battle will soon stir up within the Li family that might end up involving the entire nation, telling Hun Bai and Chun Zhun to be prepared for that, declaring their support for Yun Xiao. If that happens, they ask Teacher Luo which side she would choose. Yu Shang turns around, announcing that she must obey His Majesty the King as the commander of the State Guardians, making the boys feel dejected. But Li Yun Xiao is my student after all, declares Yu Shang, turning back around with a bright smile. Elsewhere, Yun Xiao suddenly sneezes despite being in tip-top shape. Meng Wu then comes running there, asking young Master Yun to have a look at her brother. Almost as if he was waiting for this, the boy proclaims that he's about to get lucky tonight. Yun Xiao gives Meng Wu 1,000 gold coins to buy her brother some medicine. She refuses to accept the huge sum of money, but he insists that it's compensation for her contribution towards saving the princess. Four hours later, Yun Xiao arrives at Meng Wu's house at the country. He finally understood how the girl was able to open the seven chakras at such a young age, considering she had to walk four hours every time she returned home from school. Remarking that they can't afford to live in the expensive houses of the capital, Meng Wu reveals that her father was a kind-hearted captain of the guard. All of them originally lived together in the city, but her father was killed in action three years ago, forcing her to move to the countryside. Yu Xiao then heads inside Meng Wu's home, seeing her brother Meng Bai completely green from head to toe. Meng Wu tells the former that the latter's condition hasn't changed for the past four to five months, so she has been working for money everywhere to get a doctor for him. It's also why Meng Wu helped Lan Fei and Yu Xiao. Not wanting to dwell on the past, the reincarnated soul starts checking Meng Bai's condition. At the same time, Meng Wu bursts into tears. I am really scared, screams out the girl, falling into Yun Xiao's chest, patting her on the head. The boy declares that he won't let her brother die even if he wanted to. What an absolute giga chad. Yun Xiao also reveals that Meng Bai is suffering from heaven and earth poisoned body, a condition which is not an illness but rather a special body type he was born with that grants him extraordinary abilities compared to normal people. Meng Bai is only suffering because he is too weak, causing the poison in his body to overwhelm him. Yun Xiao tries the golden needle acupuncture to contain the poison, but doesn't work. He then moves on to transferring the poison to his own body, unleashing energy fusion. As Meng Wu gets worried for Yun Xiao, he assures her that there's no reason to as the poison will simply get absorbed like vitamins when it's transferred to his body. Soon, the poison begins to leave Meng Bai's body and tries to corrode Yun Xiao. However, he simply snarks at this attempt and calls out, Heavenly Commandment, form the energy. Seeing this, Meng Wu is brought to tears. Ever since her dad died, she has never seen anyone sacrifice so much to help her. Even if people helped her, they did it for her beauty and showed their true colors in the end. Li Yun Xiao's tendency to put others before himself is so caring, murmurs Meng Wu, wiping her tears with a bright smile. Oh, she in love love. At the same time, a swirling vortex of energy gathers in front of Yun Xiao, and Yu begins to absorb it, just like the boy thought, it was heavenly energy. With this, he mutters, Heh, I am in luck today. Meng Bai wakes up with his normal appearance, wondering where he is. Overcome with joy, 
Meng Wu hugs her brother and introduces him to Yun Xiao. As Meng Bai thanks the reincarnated soul for saving him, he gets upset, telling him to produce more poison next time since it's barely enough right now. The kid thinks that Yun Xiao is joking around, only to hear a stern proclamation, I never joke. Calling Meng Bai fortunate for meeting him like this, Yun Xiao commands the brat to kowtow three times in order to become his disciple. Though, Meng Bai laughs at this, since the reincarnated soul is only a year older than him. Hearing this, Yu Xiao laments that his previous life's reputation doesn't carry over to this one. Right then, Meng Wu forces her brothers to pay his respects, vouching for Yun Xiao's talents. However, Meng Bai begs his sister not to ruin his future like this. Having went through so much for him, Meng Wu bursts into tears at the comment, emotionally blackmailed by her. Meng Bai kowtows to Yun Xiao. The reincarnated soul reveals that he will present the heavenly tyrant body technique to the kid as it seems to match well with his body's condition and will ensure that his future has endless potential. Though, Mun Bai demands that he teach him some stronger martial techniques like the concealed tiger fist. Who let bro cook? Yu Xiao feels stabbed by the brat's words, who seems to think that the concealed tiger's fist is better than Ao Chang Kong's best technique. Trying to make her brother obey Yu Xiao, Meng Wu remarks that a newbie like him has to start with a basic technique. Of course, the legendary heavenly tyrant technique being labeled as such hurts the boy more than Meng Bai's words. Having had enough of the moronic siblings, Yun Xiao announces that the brat will practice the technique whether he wants to or not, as it will help him suppress the toxicity inside his body. With this, he shows him the first three out of the body training technique's 18 styles. And so, Meng Bai training. Though, he seems to be stuck up on the concealed tiger fist even after the entire day passes, annoying Yun Xiao to no end. While bickering with the brat, the reincarnated soul notices a pile of raw ores nearby that Meng Wu used to mine with his uncle before the poison took over. Although they were piled up here because of not being sold due to their poor quality, Yun Xiao senses something inside the bucket, finding a fifth-grade material called the Purple Sun Stone. After finding out where Meng Bai mined it, Yun Xiao reveals that the stone is used to construct gravity arrays and is thus very valuable. As Meng Bai gets excited about it, Yu Xiao keeps the purple sunstone for himself, getting called out for taking something that belongs to his disciple. Talking like a true Khan artist, Yu Xiao swiftly heads off before he gets reprimanded for his greed, blue committing daylight robbery. The reincarnated soul leaves the countryside in a great mood, celebrating that he has taken in a worthy disciple who will achieve great things in the future, wanting to refine a Suan weapon for himself now. Yu Xiao decides to take a trip to the Alchemist Association. Meanwhile, in the Alchemist Association's main building, Zhang Qing Fun stands with Xu Hun and announces, Today, you must find Li Yun Xiao. Yun Xiao arrives at the Alchemist Association, expressing the desire to borrow their strengthening array. There, the receptionist Lu Yao informs him that Zhang Qing Fun and Xu Fun are looking for him. She tells the boy to follow her, getting surprised by his unimpressed demeanor. As Lu Yao leaves, Yun Shi Yao rudely sits at the head of the table and questions what business they have with him. Giving the boy an invitation to the king's banquet, Ching Fun informs him that he can bring five others along with him. As Yun Shi Yao gets annoyed that they summon him there just for that, the third tier alchemist asks the real question of whether he is a disciple of Long Yang Di or not. No, declares Yun Shi Yao, getting up to leave if there's nothing else. Getting flustered, the two alchemists practically beg for him to stay. They tell Yun Xiao to take a look at the token of appreciation that they have prepared for him. Bribery for the win. The first of the two gifts is a badge of a second-tier alchemist, the highest Xu Han has the authority to issue. Yun Xiao likes it for the monthly payment alone and thanks the guild master. They then bring him over to the second gift, Ching Fun's beloved Suan weapon that he is parting ways with, hoping that Yun Xiao teaches him golden needle acupuncture. Not bad, mutters the reincarnated soul remarking that it still has many flaws. Ching Fun and Su Hun get maddened by the way Yun Xiao talks, unable to comprehend how he has the gal to say such a thing. You don't believe me? Questions the boy, letting them know of the weapon's downfalls with the wisdom of a ninth tier refiner. After hearing his explanation, Zhang Ching Fun sees nothing more than scrap metal in his former beloved sword. At least dude is finally self-aware. Looking at Yun Xiao, Guild Master Xu Hun sees a higher tier of the alchemic way waving at him, referring to the reincarnated soul with honorifics now. Ching Fun wonders how he can refine Xu on weapons of higher quality. 
Yu Shiyao then proposes that since he wants to refine a Xuan weapon of his own, they let him use their refinement chambers and watch him. How much you will learn from it will depend on your own abilities, mutters Yun Shiyao, baffling Qing Fun and Su Han. Yun Shiyao arrives at the Alchemist Association's refinement chambers, accompanied by Zhang Qing Fun and Su Han. Clinging on his young master Yun, Ji Ya Rong is also there. The man is in tears, feeling grateful that his lord remembered to invite him. Ignoring him, Yun Xiao marvels at the auxiliary refinement array, remarking that its caliber is beyond even his expectations. With a thrilled look on his face, the reincarnated soul asks Ji Ya Rong if the raw materials he asked for are all ready to use, wanting to refine some pills for his new disciple along with the Xuan weapon. The three alchemists are shocked hearing this. Ji Ya Rong offers to help his young master Yun out by refining the pills instead, only to get accused of not being interested in watching him refine. While Ji Ya Rong falls in line and brings out the raw materials, Su Han questions the absurdity of using the same array for two different kinds of refinement at the same time. With pure confidence, Yun Shi Yao proclaims that he is about to witness the feat for the first time ever with his own eyes. Zhang Qing Fun stops Su Han from intervening, thinking that the boy will correct his mistake upon suffering a setback. Does he know? Soon, Yun Shi Yao begins the refining process putting all the materials together in the same cauldron to refine two types of pills and a Xuan weapon. Seeing this, Ching Fan and Su Han get convinced that the reincarnated soul is just a foolish child who doesn't know what he's doing. Meanwhile, Yun Xiao starts moving around in erratic patterns. Cauldron Crest Pill Refinement and Cauldron Eye Weapon Refinement, the boy partially activates the seemingly connected refinement array, a feat completely unheard of. He then informs the foolish alchemists of the method to unleash the array's full functionalities, leaving them baffled that this is what Yun Xiao calls a simple refinement. My humble king, young master Yun, you are a god, explains Ji Ya Rong, stuttering over his words. Though he also questions how Yun Xiao is talking to them after saying that every part of the alchemist's mind is important, remarking that he doesn't want to and is just worried that the idiots won't understand anything otherwise. The reincarnated soul declares that he will say no more. This leaves poor Ji Ya Rong catching death glares from both Zhang Qing Fun and Su Han. Yun Shi Yao's completely wins over the three alchemists, deeply moving their hearts with his beautiful movements. With the pills already forming, the boy begins refining the Su Han weapon, breaking down fine iron into its original state. He combines the purple sun stone, forging a magnificent sword that leaves the three alchemists in awe. Finally, Yun Xiao finishes the refinement process. Seeing his young master Yun tired, Ji Ya Rong offers him some calming spirit nourishing pills, only for them to be discarded like trash. The other two alchemists then try to win over the boy. In the end, Yun Xiao consumes a second tier aphrodisiac that Su Han was suspiciously holding on to, called the Fantastical White Crane Pill. Something is rising, but it's not the shield hero. Declaring that everything else is trash, Yun Xiao sits down to meditate for a few minutes. Having witnessed the boy's groundbreaking refinement firsthand, the three alchemists feel like they are still in a dream and sit down along with him. Moments later, Yun Xiao sighs out, remarking that he is finally recovered by a third. Just like his young master Yun, Ji Ya Rong has first tier soul power too. However, as it takes him at least seven days to completely recover after training, he questions how the reincarnated soul did it so fast. He is simply constructed alternatively. Trash like you, dares to compare itself to me, replies Yun Shi Yao in a condescending manner. Observing his newly forged sword, Yun Shi Yao allows Zhang Qing Fun and Su Hun to examine it. Having never seen such a perfectly balanced mystic weapon that is already unsealed, the alchemists express curiosity about its further capabilities. Yun Shi Yao then reveals that he has incorporated two gravity arrays into the sword and shouts out unseal unleashing a tenfold gravitational force. He adds that since the other gravity array also contains a tenfold gravitational force, activating the two together would generate a 100-fold gravitational force. Baffled by the concept of a mystic weapon possessing three unsealed states, the alchemists wonder if he can lend it to them to study for a few days. Of course, Yu Xiao flat out refuses, not wanting to use their crappy spring water Suan weapon they gifted him earlier. While Ching Fun and Su Han are brought to tears again put down like this, Ji Ya Rong Aka Chief Rubbish feels elated for them as being scolded by Yun Xiao as an honor. Nah, the glazing is crazy. Right then, the reincarnated soul remarks that he will mainly use this sword for personal cultivation. 
To that end, Yun Xiao opts to name it Black Girl. Out of the confused alchemists, Ji Ya Rong musters up the courage to ask what the chosen name has to do with the sentence before it. Though, his experience as Chief Rubbish comes in clutch, making him decide against it. Yu Xiao then reveals the flawless pills that he has refined, leaving Ching Fun and Su Hun in utter disbelief. Unlocking the achievement of being a proud slave, Ji Ya Rong starts boasting about being the servant of such a skilled master. Suddenly, Yun Xiao says that he will spend an hour answering all their questions as thanks for letting him use the refining room. After all, not only is the boy skilled in alchemy and martial arts, but he is also quite successful in the fields of music, array, painting, chess, and picking up girls. Bro is literally Himothy. And so, the once world-famous ninth-tier sovereign alchemist answers the alchemist's queries as easily as if he were teaching primary school students. Afterwards, Su Hun and Zhang Qing Fun bow before Yun Xiao, thanking them for solving his doubts. The boy then leaves, promising to come back to teach them the next time he's free. Unfathomable, even more so than Long Yang Di. This is what Su Hun and Qing Fun are left thinking of Yun Xiao. Over with Meng Wu, she arrives back at home. There, a furious Yun Xiao awaits her, questioning where Meng Bai is. Right as the girl reveals that her brother is out digging in the mine, he comes back with a haul of raw ores. However, Yun Xiao delivers a vicious slap across his face, ordering Meng Bai to kneel. The impact of the slap sends Meng Bai rolling across the floor, with a bloodied mouth the brat protests being slapped like this, questioning who Yun Xiao is to slap him. I am your master, proclaims the reincarnated soul, asking Meng Bai if he has practiced the first three styles of the tyrant body tempering technique. However, the kid still rebels, ignoring his sister's pleas, listen here you little she, Declaring that he can't let Meng Wu work alone to make money, Meng Bai refuses to apologize to the good-for-nothing teacher. In response, Yun Xiao calls out the ungrateful brat and forces him to kneel by striking down his right knee. I refuse to obey. Even now, Meng Bai continues to provoke Yun Xiao. A useless disciple like you is a disgrace for me, proclaims Yun Xiao, remarking that it's no big deal to kill him. Knowing that the boy isn't bluffing, Meng Wu begs her brother to apologize, going as far as to disown him if he doesn't. Right then, the uncle from next door, a five stars warrior named Li Da Yuan, arrives at the commotion. As Meng Bai informs him of Yun Xiao's wrongdoings, Da Yuan gets ready to teach the arrogant boy a lesson. He even takes Meng Bai as his disciple instead, selling him dreams of making bank in a mercenary group. Meng Wu tries to stop the man from getting hurt, but he is adamant about teaching Yun Xiao a lesson. Dumb ways to die. Unfazed, the reincarnated soul announces that he will just stand there without moving, dodging, or fighting back, not even using his primordial chi. If Dai Yuan hurts just one of his hair, Yu Xiao promises to kneel in front of him and lick his shoes. Hearing this, the Five Stars warrior arrogantly announces that even a martial sovereign of the Nine Realms wouldn't be able to stand against his onslaught with such restrictions. Universal Soul Suppressor, Forbidden Expansion Yun Xiao's declaration renders Li Da Yuan unable to do anything. Following the boy's commands, he kneels down, crawling to lick his shoes. Of course, Yun Xiao kicks him away, deeming the man unworthy of even licking his shoes, and so, Meng Bai is left in utter disbelief. Kicking away the supposedly brave and tough Uncle Li like a little mutt, Yun Xiao turns his attention to Meng Bai. With tears flowing down her eyes, Meng Wu begs the reincarnated soul to forgive him. Hearing her pleas, Yun Xiao sighs out, his body was good, whatever, I don't want him anymore. With these words, the reincarnated soul begins to leave. Wait, don't go, shouts out Meng Bai. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. Dragging himself over to Yun Xiao, the kid repeatedly begs him to keep being his master. The boy then gives Meng Bai one last chance. If he can open all seven chakras and break through to the first origin realm in five days, Yu Xiao will allow him to continue being his disciple. Meng Wu deems the task to be impossible, as her brother has only opened five chakras so far. However, Meng Bai accepts this condition. Yun Xiao heads off to the nearest hotel, promptly starting his training. Meanwhile, the first joint training seclusion in decades is announced. Five days later, Yun Xiao breaks through to the four stars level and makes his way to Meng Wu's house. There, he was glad to see that Meng Bai has finally broken through to the One Star Warrior realm and begins to absorb all the poison created in the process. As Meng Bai notes that some of his strength faded with the pain of the poison as well, 
Yu Xiao gives him a lesson on the heaven and earth poison body. Meng Bai's end goal is to harness his body's poisons, becoming unbeatable in the process. Hearing the explanation about the poison in his body being beneficial, Meng Bai realizes that his master was just using him all this time. Blood got caught in 4K. Yu Xiao just teased his way out of it, giving the Meng siblings some pills to advance their martial levels. Right then, Li Dihuan arrives there to take the kid mining, only to start trembling when confronted by Yun Xiao. Getting told to introduce himself, the man asks the boy to just refer to him as Uncle Li as that's what everyone calls him. You got a death wish, proclaims Yun Xiao, prompting the man to introduce himself properly. Getting information about the purple sunstones from Li Da Yuan, Yun Xiao orders him to sneak into the Li family's mining team and find him these stones, offering a handsome salary. After Da Yuan heads out, Yu Xiao tells the Hmong siblings to get dressed as they will be attending a banquet at the Imperial Palace with him. And so, Meng Wu takes the two boys shopping. Soon enough, Yun Xiao makes an excuse and sprints out of there. Later, while the boy chows down on some skewers, a ninja-like identity calls out his name, quickly making a run for it. Himph, don't try to fool me, proclaims Yun Xiao, immobilizing the ninja with a toothpick-sized wooden skewer. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. The reincarnated soul then takes the entity to a deserted area and begins the interrogation. Turns out, that's what the ninja wanted all along, as he reveals himself to be one of the Duke family's staff named Li Xi'an. He informs Yun Xiao that rumors of his exploits have reached Li Yi, who will make things difficult for him if he attends the banquet. So, the boy's fourth uncle hopes that he can stand down tonight to avoid that conflict. However, Yun Xiao, who has never taken Li Yi seriously, vows to shatter him if he chooses to get in his way. Li Xian insists that Yun Xiao stay away from Li Yi until their preparations are complete, but the reincarnated soul expresses no interest in playing house with his father and them. Though, he does note that the current king must have a hand in the forces backing Li Yi. Li Xian questions how Yun Xiao guessed the situation, getting told that it's really obvious. The king is unable to sleep peacefully, knowing that the country's entire army is basically the Li family's private army. As a measure to keep them in check, he contributed to the Lan family's rapid rise in recent years, but it still wasn't enough. So Qin Zheng got a puppet in Li Yi to divide the Li family from within, all the while keeping their father in check. Understanding that Yun Xiao thoroughly understands the complex situation, Li Xian questions if they are really going to let themselves be maneuvered without resistance. You don't have to worry about that, remarks the reincarnated soul, instructing him to go back and tell their fourth uncle to relax. As Li Xian tries to say something, Yun Xiao shuts him up and reiterates that he is uninterested in their plans. But if Li Yi doesn't watch himself, or Qin Zheng gets tired of being the king, I don't mind helping him enter a different position. With this stern proclamation, Yun Xiao heads off. That's why he's the goat, the goat. 